For this lesson, let's return to Stonehenge. In the previous lesson, we applied an effect, but we know what it did. It was a destructive form of editing. I'm not really all that keen about the word destructive here. You're changing the image, but you are permanently changing it. I guess that might be a better way than saying destructive. But, you know, we did destroy the original image. If we go into effects, anything we apply. Colored pencil. Doesn't matter what it is. If we apply it, basically it's going to change the image. If we go back to layers, well, that's what we've got. We need to rest control of this thing. So I'm going to press undo. Start by making a copy of this. And I think you know where I might be going with this. But if I drag it onto the new icon, it makes a copy. I'm going to call this one Effect. We can leave the background as a background, but make sure you have this selected. Now let's go back into Effects, and let's do, actually I do like Dark Strokes. Let's do this one right here. Now, if we go back to Layers, we now have this one, and we have this one down here. So we have the original, and we have one with the effect on it. And we can try things now. We can play around. For example, we could try a blending mode to blend the effect into the original. Like, say, multiply. It usually makes things darker. Actually, interesting. How about overlay? Everything we do is a subtle change. We could play around with opacity, too, to bring them together. Let's do this. Let's take it back to normal. And let's try something else here. How about a layer mask? How about controlling what areas get the effect? So do this. Pick up your magic wand tool. So if I go down here into options, I want this one right here. Now the magic wand tool has a tolerance and the default is 32, which is probably fine. I don't want to sample all layers. Sample this one. I do want contiguous. In other words, I just want it to stay within the area I click on and anti-aliasing can help to make it smoother. Click right up here. Now check that out. It got that whole area from left to right outside the stones and basically it selected it just the way I wanted to with a tolerance of 32. If I hold the shift key down and pop in here and then down here holding the shift key, there's another area here, another area here, and there's a real small area if you can see it right there. Let's see if I can get that one too. It looks like I did. Now I told you we'd be talking more about selection. To me, selection is important because if you know all the tools, you know the one that's going to do the best job for you. And this one probably was the best for the job that we had at hand. Now what I want to do actually is I want to preserve the Stonehenge rocks, okay, whatever you want to call them. And I want to basically return the sky to normal. So I need to reverse my selection, but it was so much easier to select it that way. So go up the word select and go down to inverse. Let me go ahead and close this out again so we can see the whole thing. Now, come up to effect and add a layer mask. So now what we have basically is we have the original sky coupled with this kind of dark stroke effect. And I'll tell you what, let's try one more thing if we can get away with it. Let's see if I can select that grass down there. It's not getting much. So let's switch gears here and see about going into maybe our quick selection tool. Okay, let's come out of this. Let's close it out and come over here and start moving across. And once it gets the feel for what I want, it actually is doing a pretty good job. I'm happy. The right tool for the right job. Now, got too much. We'll worry about that in a second. Let's see if I can kind of come up here and get into this area. Come over here. And it's getting too much again. That's all right. Okay. Now I'm going to hold the Alt key down and see if I can dust across this area. Alt means remove, just like that. And I want this rock back too, I would think. So the Alt key again, see if I can get that rock. Now it's still trying to get this area in here. So I'm going to use a smaller brush with the Shift key held down to add. And see if I can get that and keep that rock. Why not? Now you could spend a lot of time playing around with this. Let's go up here too, see if I can get that area. Okay, now I'm going to stop. Now what I want to do is add those areas that I have selected to the mask. But before we do, why don't we go ahead and come up here to the word select and look at refine edge. See what we got. Actually, that's not that bad. So if we come over here, let's give it a little bit of radius. 
I just love this feature. It is so nice to work with. And maybe smooth it just a little bit like that. Okay. Now let's come back out. Click OK. Okay. Tell you what now. We remember the shortcut on filling an area with the current foreground color, which is Alt Backspace inside of Windows and Option Delete on a Mac. So if I have my mask selected and I use that fill option, it will only fill the areas with black that I have selected and isolate that from the adjustment. That's my goal anyway. So if I hold the Alt key down, I'm on a Macintosh, so it's actually the Option key and Delete, Alt Backspace, and fill those areas like that. And now I have the effect on the stones themselves, but my sky is normal and my grass is normal. Effects are very aggressive unless you know how to control them. And this is exactly how you do it. And this is one of the easiest things in the world. You create a layer, a copy. You work the effect on the copy. You then have some fun with it. Let's go ahead and close this out. And you can save it if you want. I'm not going to. And we're right back in the organizer.